We have approximately five weekends or 10 days if we utilize all of them or approximately about 100 hours to finish the entirety of the tiny home build-in before it needs to be on its property. Uh, it's a bit ambitious, but I do believe that we can accomplish it just because we're not going to be putting any plumbing inside of it. Uh, there will be basic electrical wiring and that's pretty much about it. This particular build is really special to me because it will be my first home ever. Uh, my 20s were particularly difficult just because I had some pretty substantial health issues that I had to deal with. Um, so my 30s are kind of like my breaking away year and uh, years, hopefully years, not just one year. And so that's something that is kind of symbolic to me, but not just that, this also, is something that I've been looking forward to learning how to build homes in a more like a more sustainable way that I could hopefully take and transfer to building tiny homes for individuals who happen to be homeless. Uh, one of my dreams is to one day start a company that builds small tiny homes for individuals. I currently do outreach uh, for the homeless and while I definitely enjoy uh, my job and the things that we do. I definitely think that the larger issue is more systemic. It's just like a lack of affordable housing uh, for individuals that they can get into uh, and then get their basic needs met. Uh, homelessness is such a complex issue that I could literally go on and on about forever, but it's really near and dear to my heart because a lot of the individuals who happen to be homeless suffer from a lot of the same health issues that I suffered from, but they just don't have the same support network that I did um, to help them, you know, recover. And so they wind up homeless and that's an additional stressor on top of everything else. So, um, yeah, it's just my dream that uh, I can help provide shelter uh, to others uh, because I was blessed to have that provided to me um, in a really difficult time. So going forward, this is our build. Uh, I'm really, you know, we don't get everything right, uh, but I'm going to try to explain best uh, what we did so that if you want to build one of these for yourself at home, you can. Uh, and at the end, I will tell you the price of absolutely everything, all the materials used. And going forward, uh, I will also be showing you how to build a bathroom or like a little outhouse uh, with a composting toilet and also like a propane shower. So let's get into it. So I'm on my way to meet up with my dad at the Pallet Palace um, to pick up some more pallets for the walls. We're not going to build the base or the ceiling out of pallets just because the pallets individually weigh about like 40 pounds and I worry that if I get too many of them on there it might exceed the payload on the trailer. So in order to reduce weight um, I'm going to take some slats out of the pallets so that they're like 16 inches apart but then also um, build the floor and the roof out of two by fours. So, but unfortunately, can't carry the pallets in the truck in the uh, SUV, so we'll have to use Dad's truck. We're meeting Dad at Home Depot. We're looking for his red Ford F-150, of which there's like 10 in the parking lot. It's like the signature vehicle of Home Depot. Papa? What? Say hello, are you ready to go get pallets? <laughs> This is my dad, George, he's helping me build. These are number two heat treated deck pallets. The two indicates damage to a support stringer has been repaired by attaching an additional support stringer to the previous one. These are also heat treated, which eradicates any insects or parasites. Number two decked pallets are cheaper, but still secure enough for building, especially if you add additional support. Also, it's important to get heat treated to avoid a pest infestation. A pallet that's been heat treated will be stamped with an HT on Today it. starts build day. What? What is it? Oh, I was wondering what happened to that. Yeah. That's my mom. <laughs> Today starts build day. We're kicking it off. 
As a moisture barrier, we stapled down a 10 by 12 6 mil polyfilm barrier and sprayed the staples with a couple coats of Gorilla Waterproof Patch and Seal to ensure that the puncture holes from the staples were sealed. If the home was going to be exposed to any prolonged harsh climate or doing any extensive traveling, I would suggest a metal flashing as a moisture barrier. Bit off these 12 footer 2x4s as the home is 11 feet and 9 and 7 eighths inch by 7 feet. This was the measurement of the wood paneling of the trailer which we wanted to build within rather than overlapping the trailer's metal rim which we did this to avoid having to drill pilot holes down through the thick metal. The floor and the roof are being framed to cut on weight uh, but just to make sure that they were really secure we snapped a line and put some cats in between the joists and the flooring. And that's my stepdad. He framed houses for years. We put the frame on the trailer and squared it up before attaching it. This tiny home has to be built to square since the trailer interferes with building it to level. We use carriage bolts to attach it to the trailer. I'll put the sizing down below. We also use flat washers to increase the bearing size and locking washers for keeping the nuts secure against heat and vibrations. Repeat after me, make sure you use a paddle bit to countersink those carriage bolts or you will not have a flush flooring. Next, grab some muscle and drill all the way through the center of that countersunk hole. But exactly how I feel about this right now. <laughs> and then give it a love tappy tap into place. And then finally, get on your back and ratchet that into place. I'm a master of the ratchet. I'm a ratchet. Oh. You don't want to mess with the ratchet. We tell you to fuck what. And then use a flat edge to make sure that it's sunk properly. Some of the flat washers wouldn't fit because the carriage bolts were too close to the metal frame of the trailer, so we had to grind them down. The funnest part was cranking them into place with a hand wrench. For those skilled in the trade fields and with raw materials, there is artistic precision. For the rest of us, there is only grinding. But I'll tell you what, I only had to grind that motherfucker once to get it to fit. We are about to venture back to Home Depot. We are three carriage bolts short, and we also want to get the board insulation and the spray foam insulation for uh, the flooring. Make sure you keep your working area clean. This is just good practice, and it makes moving through the steps quicker and easier. We attach the back of the tiny home with these large uh, zinc coated uh, brackets. The reason why was because uh, the metal plating came in further, so we had to look at a different option for attaching it. Next, I just finished stapling down the 6 mil polyfilm. Just to give it an additional moisture barrier, I wrapped it all the way around the trailer and then I used the Gorilla Waterproof Sealant to spray off any of the holes and then to spray around the frame just to add an additional seal. This was after 12 hours of working. I didn't even realize how high I was getting until I went inside. I am definitely high as shit. I'm fucking Gorilla Glue sealant. This is 2 inch R Tech board insulation with a radiant barrier. Make sure you leave an air gap on either side of the insulation when installing it. It provides an additional layer of insulation and also you need it for the radiant barrier to work. As for installation, I was told silver side up to keep the heat in, silver side down to keep the heat out, as the silver side acts as a radiant barrier to keep the heat from passing through the insulation. However, when winter comes, we'll confirm the validity of that advice. Then I used a filler to touch up around the edges. And who the hell needs a table saw when you got a yardstick and some clamps? All jokes aside though, this technique definitely, like, impressed me. Then we just screwed the floor down, which we did in three sections. We used 4x12, I call it chipboard, but I think the technical term is like strand or something like that. And there it is finished. We finished by squaring up two pallets, which will serve as the walls. 
uh, subscribe if you enjoyed and want to follow the build. The walls will be the next video.